Hello everyone, I'm Luis Miguel Azorin and I welcome you to a new video on astronomical events from Astro Academy. In this video, we're going to go over the highlights of the night sky for November 2025. This month brings us a very interesting sky. We have a supermoon, or as we prefer to call it, a full moon at Perigee, several planetary conjunctions, meteor showers, and of course, ideal moments for deep sky observation. You know, every month is an invitation to look up, to learn from the universe, and, if you feel like it, to capture it with your camera. So let's start by reviewing, as always, first of all, the faces of the moon, which mark many of the ideal moments for observation and photography. We begin with the full moon phase, which will occur on November 5th, known as the Beaver Moon. Its name comes from old North American calendars because it coincided with the time to set beaver traps and store their pelts for the winter. This year it is also a supermoon, which means that the full moon will be at its closest point to Earth, that is, at its perigee, so it will appear larger and brighter than other full moons. It will be a perfect moment for nighttime landscape photography, including the moon in the frame. Imagine the giant moon rising over mountains, forests, or even buildings with orange or golden hues near the horizon. On November 12th, the moon enters its last quarter phase. Here, we will see how only the left side of its visible face is illuminated. And what about the Terminator? The line that separates light and shadow highlights craters and mountain ranges with an incredible three-dimensional effect. This phase is ideal for observing with a telescope, but also for lunar photography. Even with a 200mm telephoto lens, you can capture details of the terrain and the most important and largest craters. On November 20th, we will have a new moon, the Queen of Dark Skies. With no moonlight polluting the sky, it's the best time of the month to capture galaxies, nebulae and star clusters. For astrophotography enthusiasts, this is the day to plan long deep sky astrophotography sessions or striking nighttime landscape photos with the Milky Way and astronomical objects. And we will close November with the first quarter moon on the 28th. The moon will appear half illuminated, but in this case on the right side, and it will be visible in the evening sky at sunset. As in the waning phase, the shadows highlight the lunar relief. But in addition, it's a fantastic phase for landscape compositions, because there's still enough natural light to illuminate the foreground without losing the stars. Now let's move on to the notable planetary events. This month, the planets offer us some very interesting visual and photographic opportunities. On November 21st, the planet Uranus will reach opposition. This means it will be directly opposite the Sun from our perspective, at its brightest and most visible point of the year. Although it's a faint planet, it is the easiest to see and photograph among the ice giants in the outermost region of the solar system. Its color is blue-green, and with a telescope and a bit of patience you can clearly distinguish its disk. Also, if you enjoy planetary astrophotography, I have an interesting challenge for you. Try to photograph as many of this planet's moons as possible. It's amazing how new technologies allow us to capture these incredible images of such distant worlds. At the beginning of the month, on November 12th, the Moon will pass close to Saturn. This conjunction will be visible to the naked eye, especially from locations in the western United States or Alaska and the eastern parts of China or Japan. You will be able to observe an especially close conjunction that could result in stunning nightscape photographs with the Moon and Saturn very close together in the sky. On November 10th, the Moon will approach Jupiter in this case, although the closest part of the conjunction will occur very high in the night sky, which won't offer much potential for landscape photography. But it will be an excellent opportunity to capture both objects with a telephoto lens or a telescope. Let's not forget that this month Saturn's rings are almost edge-on, a real challenge for planetary astrophotographers. Get your planetary equipment ready to capture this event, which happens roughly every 15 years. In addition to all these planetary events, throughout November we will continue to have Comet C-2025A6 very well positioned in the evening sky, which is proving to be quite a spectacle and is even visible to the naked eye. And finally, November will be one of the best months to observe and photograph 3 i atlas that object everyone has been talking about. After its perihelion, its closest approach to the Sun, on October 29th, this fascinating object is now on an escape trajectory, leaving our solar system forever. Although the closest approach to Earth will not occur until December 19th, 3i Atlas will start to appear higher and higher in the morning sky, making it easier to observe and photograph. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that the MPC, the Minor Planet Center, currently has an active campaign to collect astrometric data on this object in order to better understand it before it leaves forever. Now let's move on to the most notable astronomical events. In addition to the Moon and planets, November offers us phenomena that make it worth spending the night under the stars. On November 17th, we reach the peak of the Leonid meteor shower, famous for its intensity in previous years. 
This year we are not expecting extreme bursts, but even so, activity of between 10 and 20 meteors per hour is expected from dark skies. To capture these meteors, the new moon helps us a lot, providing a perfect sky for wide field photography. And finally, let's go over some photography tips so you can capture some of these events. The supermoon on November 5th. Look for an eye-catching foreground to give the moon a sense of scale. Trees, mountains, buildings or human silhouettes work very well. Place the moon near the horizon to take advantage of atmospheric refraction, which gives warm, golden tones. For conjunctions between the moon and Saturn or the moon and Jupiter, use a medium telephoto lens from 100 to 300 mm to capture both objects in a single frame. Adjust the exposure so you don't blow out the moon and so the planets remain distinguishable. The Leonids on November 17th. It's ideal to photograph them with a wide-angle lens, a sturdy tripod, and exposures of 15 to 25 seconds with a high ISO. Aim toward the constellation Leo and shoot in sequence for several hours to maximize your chances of capturing meteors. If you also incorporate landscape elements, you can achieve photos like this one. And of course, take advantage of the new moon to bring your gear out into the field and practice deep sky astrophotography. This is the best time of the month to do it. And don't forget the waxing and waning faces of the moon to set up your planetary astrophotography equipment and capture spectacular high-resolution images of the lunar terminator. If you want to learn more about astrophotography and astrophotographic processing, remember that you have access to the complete courses from Astro Academy and Academia Natural Portraits. And that's it for the astronomical events of November 2025. A month with a supermoon, planetary conjunctions, meteor showers, and dark skies perfect for astrophotography. See you again in the next Astro Academy video. And until then, clear skies.